Hi, my name is Kinshuk. Uh, I am a DIY woodworker from Kolkata. So, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to show, I mean, I am going to talk about the fundamental philosophy behind the glue joint. It's not the truly technique oriented video, but uh, in order to do this glue joint, what are the basic things you need to keep in your mind, as well as a specific case where glue joint is very effective. Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about this specific case where glue joint is very helpful. This is a highly figured wood. You see, like the figures are awesome. Uh, the name of this wood is Sharp. It is primarily sourced from northeastern provinces, especially from Assam. Now, this specific stock, whatever I am having, is having a basic problem. You see, there is this cup. Now, in order to prepare this stock for use in the cabinet, I need to mill this stock, which in order to remove this, you know, this, this, all these uh, defects, I need to plane this. So, some of the, some of the uh, stocks will be removed. Now, in order to straighten this, much of the stock, stock will be removed. So this will actually reduce the thickness of the stock below the desired level what I am actually looking for. I am looking for a, a, a thickness which is actually 11 by 16 which I cannot achieve by, by following just a straight method. So uh, one of the ways to do is I will actually rip this from the middle. You see, if I rip this from the middle, the two parts are, whatever it will be coming, are more or less even. Then I need to mill that perfectly and apply the glue join. But one thing you need to keep in mind in order to do the glue join, you need to keep these grain patterns intact. There shouldn't be a kind of discontinuation from the grain pattern. Okay, now let's come to this this specific piece. Now this is also from the from the from the same stock from the same uh, piece of stock I cut. Uh, this figures since it's a night time and I'm taking in fluorescent light. These grains are not that that prominently shown. I mean, it's not that kind of visible, but it's a wonderful load. Now, this is this is a relatively flat one. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, like uh, while doing the glue join, there are some of the very fundamental things. We all know that after applying the glue, you need to put these pieces in, uh, 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 clamp them together and we have a basic feel like whenever, even my earlier days when I used to do the glue join, I apply the clamp, tighten it and the gaps are gone. If there is any visible gap, those are gone after applying the clamp. But just this uh, removal of these gaps or removal of this specific defect between these two pieces which are supposed to glue join together after applying the clamp is not enough. As Krenov pointed out, fundamentally first you need to check when these two pieces are gracefully placed side by side whether they are uh, meeting properly or not there shouldn't be any visible gap. Then only, after applying the gap, these two pieces will be indistinguishable. You cannot actually make out where the join uh, starts and where, where, where the join ends. Now see, it's actually two pieces. Now, in order to achieve 
a, a finer degree of glue join there are couple of very fundamental thing i am a, a primarily a hand tool based uh, woodworker so i i i have my hand planes to do do the milling i mean i do the milling with the hand planes but whoever using the power tools the fundamental objective remains same in order to prepare the stock the stock should be absolutely straight across the across the surface it should be absolutely straight if there is any twist you need to remove the twist the edges should be straight and absolutely square if the edges are not square these two pieces won't be you know meeting with each other evenly the the the, the surface wouldn't be straight and if uh, uh, one more point like these two pieces should have an even thickness these two pieces should be milled in such a way that they should have an even thickness although this may seem a bit uh, kind of challenging using just hand tools or using the planes but i will show a, a subsequent video where by following certain methods this can be achievable with a little bit of practice so this is a fundamental i mean if you pay a close attention to this specific details the result will be rewarding so just before concluding i would like to uh, give a quick uh, glimpse of the uh, primarily my milling tools so first for preparing stock i reach for my jack plane which is an old vintage stanley number no. 5 then i reach for uh this sofa jointer which is number no. 7 then i reach for this smoother which is number no. 4 and half it's also from shobha and occasionally i mean in certain cases i also reach for i mean this these two planes are complementary this number no. 4 and half and this number four uh, which is actually a bedrock plane old vintage stanley bedrock plane but i just got the body and the frog i didn't got the the lever cap cap iron or the blade which i uh, took for anant but rest of the things are like the original one and for all the planes i used i used uh anand blade so that's it thank you